Hi, welcome back to the Thai Law Forum. Um, I'm here with Warren Olson. He was a private investigator in Thailand for over a decade. Uh, he currently resides in New Zealand and he has authored and co-written several books on his experiences as an investigator here in Thailand. Uh, how are you doing today? Yeah, fine. It's pretty uh, pretty cold here in New Zealand compared to my time in Thailand, Nicole, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting used to it. Okay, well that's good. Well, I'm going to get straight into the interview because uh, today we're going to be talking about prostitution and Mr. Olson is going to give us his um, experiences and his views on uh, what's going on in Thailand right now with that issue. So first of all, let's just go back. You were in Thailand for over a decade. When were you last in Thailand? Uh, I left not long after the tsunami, so that's about 2005. So, you know, um, changes in in laws in the last uh, five or six years um, certainly may make a difference to my time there. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I have almost daily contact with contacts um, in the kingdom. So um, I don't think that in all the people's um, outlook has changed, but, but certainly laws may have been um, enforced since I was here. Now, how many of your cases involved prostitution? Maybe not always directly, but indirectly, probably 75% of them. And, and you know, Nicole, I take the very wide view here, again, it's a, a Thai attitude that um, talking prostitution, we just aren't talking, um, you know, some girls that work in Pat Pong or, or Soy Cowboy or something like that, or, or in a local massage parlor. Mm -hmm. the, there's a big percentage of my job uh, of my work and of, of um, what has to go under the umbrella of prostitution in Thailand as a whole in what uh, people that we turned um, sort of in the trade is, is P for P, P, P for P's or play for pay. Um, th these were girls and boys of course who worked um, perhaps at a day job, who had a menial job in a factory, who worked in restaurants or whatever. But um, if the rent was due, if their family needed money, well, there's many, many um, wants for both foreigners and for locals uh, in, in practically every city in Thailand where what I would term a casual um, sex worker, but not, nonetheless not a prostitute, um, can be found. Now, what are your views on Thailand, not, not even say legalizing prostitution, but just changing the laws or going in the direction of Sweden where they have uh, illegalized buying sex, but if you're selling it, it's, it's not illegal. And then, uh, you know, well, I'm a, I'm a foreigner. I, I still tend to think, especially on these sort of issues, I, mm -hmm. I can think with a with a Thai outlook, and I just can't see that ever happening. Okay. Um, you know, the, the first thing we have to look at is, is you know, Thais are Buddhists, and um, you know, amongst the the, the, the five precepts of, of Buddhism is, is um, of course, the the one to deal with, um, you know. Um, sexual misbehavior. Mm -hmm. So um, I just think it goes against their their religion um, it, to bring the topic to the fore, to discuss it, to have laws. Um, how much do you think of it is because they're trying to support themselves or family education, something like that, or just going into it because they want the luxuries that come from that? Well, certainly they might try to um, tell some some foreigner that he, he um, you know, they might charge him an exorbitant amount or try to get money off him. A few days later when they were desperately broke and I gave them 20 baht for some food or for a bus to be home, I mean, they were just eternally grateful. Occasionally I'd wander out um, at night with my little daughter who was then about 18 months, two years old. I mean, and these were hard, what the Westerners would see as hardcore working girls. Mm -hmm. They'd all rush over, they'd buy a fruit, they'd make a fuss of her. I mean, they, they were just down to earth good kids with limited education doing their best. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and, and from, my, from my experience, 99% of the people I came across in the night trade were doing it to help their family. Um, I don't think any of them go into it um, just for the excitement and the glamour and just to, um, you know, um, purely selfish monetary reasons. Mm -hmm. I think it's, from what I saw, it was always family orientated in, in some respect. Now what about any of the prostitutes that are coming outside of Thailand, such as from Europe? 
do you think that Thai law should be harder on them? Yes, I mean, again, you can go to almost any country in the world. I, with my work, I travel mostly around um, Southeast Asia, but I, I mean, the likes of Macau, mm -hmm. um, Hong Kong, there's a lot of Asian girls working there, Japan. Yeah, and certainly there's girls that have ended up in those places um, believing or, or, or allegedly believing they're going to work in a restaurant um, and ending up in um, massage parlors, I think particularly in Macau, it's, it's, it's quite corrupt. I guess by the time you got done and were finished with your private investigating here in Thailand, did you, do you think that it's become less about prostitution, there's been more of uh, human sex trafficking and it's be time to become a bit of a hub for that? Very few Thai people, um, while you can find them all around the globe, very few go there totally against their will. Um, you know, bound up, tied, gag, go against their will. Mm -hmm. They will often go to another country thinking that they're going to have better working conditions or better payment than they get, but I don't think many go totally um, a drag that's screaming against their will, which is, which is trafficking. Mm -hmm. What do you think Thailand is doing right as far as stopping any of the, the prostitution? I mean, I know it's still there, but as far as the more severe cases? Yeah, I helped a, a 60 Minutes program who wanted to look into this and thought how unjust it was. And we couldn't find a person to speak up against it because yeah. the girl said, well, hey, this is great. I'm getting back at the nightclubs. I'm getting um, a retainer to help my family, which is better than being at home planting rice. Mm -hmm. And the wives of these, um, of these uh, gentlemen, usually sort of middle to upper class or affluent Thai men, they said, well, my husband's taken off. This way, we still see him, he comes home, he supports our family. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it comes back to the children, the children are getting cared for. And so the wives would turn a blind eye. So the, the whole situation, um, what are you going to do, Nicole? Are you going to send them all to, to work in factories where they get exploited? Mm -hmm. You know, they work long hours, they get to a bar a day. Um, it's not ideal, but it, it's, it's been a Thai way of life, and if you bring down the laws and really enforce it, really, uh, you know, I don't think Thais would accept that. And all you're going to do is, is drive away. Now, sadly, a good percentage of the tourists don't come to Thailand to see the culture, to see the temples, to understand the people. And what about programs that are trying to help any of these girls, you know, or boys who want to get out of the system of prostitution? Um, Good question, Nicole. Do they want to get out? Now, I mean, I think it's a vicious circle because what happens is, um, in most cases, and this is what I see as a really the downside of, of prostitution or nightlife, uh, is that again, from from my observations, from talking mm -hmm. to people, it, it's thought that something like 90% of people working um, in the night trade um, are on some type of drug. Uh, okay, mostly it's the local, local uh, methamphetamine or Yabar as it's called. And this simply just, it's, it was introduced to Thailand 10, 20, 30 years ago, you know, initially to help laborers work all day in the sugarcane fields or fishermen work all night on boats. It's, it's moved into the night trade. It was uh, the media tried to, uh, under government uh, instruction, change it from Yamar horse medicine to Yabar, crazy medicine. But it's, it's just rife, and obviously it allows girls, along with um, karaoke singers or waitresses or taxi drivers, bus drivers, to work long hours, and they're generally paid by the hour. And this is causing a lot of damage, and of course then they become addicted to some extent. Most, I wouldn't say most, but many bar owners will um, not encourage the girls, but they sort of turn a blind eye because, again, you know, in some of the bars particularly, the girls have no choice on who the customer may be. So let's face it, now, if I was a bargle, if you were a bargle, I mean, I'd, I'd be taking as many drugs as I could so I could just live in a haze and get through the day. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what happens. And so then it's not so much breaking the cycle of prostitution, it's breaking the drug cycle, which is, I think, proving difficult.